In our today's lecture, we'll be discussing with you guys about the column chromatography or the column adsorption chromatography. First of all, we will know about the chromatography, what is chromatography. After that, we will discuss the column chromatography, the components of the chromatography, the components of the column chromatography, and uh, next, we will be talking about the instrumentation of the column chromatography. After that, the working procedure or performance and here we will be discussing about the steps of the working and at the end we will be talking about the principle of the column resorption chromatography. So let's start from the very first point that is the chromatography. What is chromatography? It is actually a technique which is used to separate components of a mixture. We have a mixture if you want to separate the components of this mixture. So that technique through which we are separating the components of this mixture that is actually known as chromatography. Now what is column chromatography? Very simple. Separation technique that involves the column. So if you are separating the components of this mixture by mean of a column, then that is actually known as column chromatography. Now uh, what are the main components of any chromatography? If you're talking about any chromatography. So we have actually two components, mobile phase and stationary phase. Mobile phase is the phase that moves. Mobile means moving, okay? And stationary phase is the phase that is stagnant or standing phase. Now with these two important components or you can say these two important phases are responsible for any type of chromatography to do the separation of particular mixture. Okay. Now let's know about the phases of the column chromatography. What are the phases of our this column chromatography? So here we got we have the mobile and the stationary phase. So the mobile phase or stationary phase in our column chromatography are the stationary phase is actually silica, alumina or cellulose. You can use any. So nowadays the mostly used is silica. So our stationary phase in our this discussion will be silica. And mobile phase, you can use a solvent or mixture of solvents as mobile phase in our this column chromatography. Now our these solvents or our this solvent, this may be organic or inorganic. You can say polar or non-polar. The next is instrumentation. The instruments required to perform this column chromatography, you must have the column, the very first important thing, because we are performing the column chromatography, we must have the column. If we don't have the column, we can use another instrument that is actually like column, that is burette, the lab instrument. So we can use a column specific type or you can use the burette also as a column. After that, we need a cotton, sand, acid wash sand, okay? And we need a stationary phase. This may be dry, may be wet. Now what is the difference between dry and wet? We will know it later. And uh, after that we need a sample. And uh, another very important thing is that we need the solvent or you can say the mobile phase. Now how this instrument works or uh, what is the working or performance or procedure of this chromatography? I will make people understand through the following steps. First of all you will take uh, the cotton plug of suitable size. You will place this cotton plug here at the bottom of the burette or the column. Now this cotton plug is actually providing a kind of a support to our this sand and stationary phase. And uh, this uh, column is actually also a kind of supporting medium for our this stationary phase. Now this cotton is actually providing a kind of a block that our sand and stationary phase uh, they must stay for a while until we start our performance. Okay, it's actually providing a kind of stay you can say. And support, remember support is provided by the column. To the stationary phase and this is actually providing a kind of a stay stay support is provided by the column remember this point the next is we need a sand after putting the cotton plug we will uh, place a kind of sand layer which must be acid washed sand and after that we will uh, pack our column with stationary phase uh, remember this packing is of two types dry and wet dry packing wet packing now what is the difference between the dry and wet packing you can guess by the names dry and wet now this is all about our stationary phase. If you take the stationary phase in powder form, in powder shape, and if you put that in our this column, then this kind of packing is actually known as dry packing. Now what is wet packing? Simple. When you take your stationary phase, uh, consider our stationary phase as silica, and you add another solvent in this uh, silica outside the column. Okay. Now this procedure is outside. Wet one is outside the column. You took silica powder and you took another solvent. Then you added them together. After that, a slurry is produced. Now, if you take this slurry and pack it into this column, then that type of packing is known as wet packing. Okay, wet and dry. Wet, when you prepare a slurry and then you pour that slurry in this column, that is known as wet packing. 
and if you just add a powder shape stationary phase into this column then that is known as dry packing so dry packing is the one that is in powder form and the wet packing is a kind of a wet shape of the stationary phase which is a slurry made outside the column and after that you are packing this wet into your column and then this kind of packing is known as wet packing so that's it in short about the dry and wet packing hope you got after that what will we do in order to avoid the bubble formation and we will apply another layer of a sand here at the top first of all we took the cotton plug after that we took acid washed sand and after that we uh, packed our column with the dry and wet you can do any okay any one after packing we must apply again sand layer now we got two sand layer sand layer at the top of the stationary phase and sand layer at the bottom of the stationary phase so you can say our stationary phase is somehow packed again in two layers of the sand at the top at the bottom now this is providing a further a kind of complete close packing to our this stationary phase so it is actually creating a kind of inert atmosphere around our stationary phase and like this uh, no bubble will be produced if bubble is produced then our separation will become imperfect it means the way our separation was supposed to be performed our separation will not be performed that way so it will be not considered as good type of the separation then so we must avoid bubble formation after that we will load our sample now here we will load our sample at the top of this sand second sand layer now the next step is run the solvent or eluent remember mobile phase has got two more names solvent or eluent solvent eluent mobile phase solvent eluent mobile phase you will apply or you will run this over this sample now this mobile phase has the ability to carry your sample with it so now this procedure is actually performed under the gravity what will happen so from here you are providing your uh, solvent your mobile phase your eluent which is carrying your sample here so like this the components of the sample like one two three four they will be separated slowly and gradually and in the meanwhile our this uh, solvent or eluent or you can say mobile phase will be moving also outside and here when our this mobile phase or eluent moves out then it is given another name that is now is eluvate you must collect this eluvate in a separate flask test tube or anything you have and remember we have a next step is that is collection of the eluvate and eluvite now what is eluvite we collected our eluvate which is actually the mobile phase that has been through our this particular column now this is known as eluvate this is actually our mobile phase which has moved through the next thing is that our these uh, uh, components of the mixture will also be moving out so we will collecting these in another uh, chambers they are actually noun is then these components are then noun is l white so here we got three more interesting new terms the very first term is the eluent the next term is eluvate and the third term is l white eluent is actually the solvent the mobile phase that you are actually going to run it through this your particular column and when it is moved through the column then this is known as eluvate and the sample when it moves out from the column is known as eluvite okay these are the terms you must remember and after that we apply some techniques elution types on this okay one is isocratic elution and another one is gradient elution we have two types of elutions isocratic and gradient elution sometimes this separation is not complete so after that what we are going to do is that we are actually running again our mobile phase eluvate or solvent through this column if we are running this solvent and this solvent is the same type or one type of solvent if you are running one type of solvent time and again through the specific column then that type of elution is known as isocritic elution okay isocritic elution if you are using one type of the solvent and you are running it through this column time and again now what is the gradient elution the name indicates gradient gradation 1 2 3 if you are using mixture of solvents mixture of solvents or if you are using you are changing your solvent after every time after every time you are changing your solvent so remember again in short if you are using only one type of solvent and you are running it through time and again that is called as isocritic elution or if you are using the mixture of solvents or you can say different types of solvent means in the first time you are running one type and second time you are running another type and third time you are running another type of solvent through this particular column then that type of elution technique is known as gradient elution okay isocratic you are using one type gradient you are using one two three four 
types or you can say the mixture of solvents in order to obtain the particular separation now the next point is the principle of the column chromatography or the column adsorption chromatography now this next point column adsorption chromatography it is actually telling you the principle of this entire chromatography now the principle here is adsorption now what is adsorption adsorption is that when any solid surface is adhering any liquid or gas to itself now you can understand from this uh, practical performance of the this column chromatography when our sample was moving some of the components were moving slow and some were moving fast the reason behind was the ability of the components to adhere with our solid stationary phase now this adhesion with the with the solid stationary phase is actually called as adsorption now this is the very reason which is separating our components some components are adhering more than the other like this the mixture is separated into components so the main theme is adsorption which is responsible to separate our mixture into components i hope so you got if still you have any kind of question feel free to ask us in the comment box and thank you for watching